In Genesis 1.27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Satan hates God's creation. And he has developed an artificial style of creation. He has developed what people call singularity. In this video, I want us to talk about the path to singularity in hopes that you can open up your discernment and get prepared for the days that lie ahead. What these people call singularity, what these individuals call singularity, should alarm you because it is diabolical and it is a system that is rising to persecute, to diabolically enslave humanity and most aren't prepared. In fact, most are ready to embrace singularity. Let's talk about its origins. Joining us now to discuss Jeffrey Hinton. Uh, Jeffrey, thanks so much for joining us. So you left your job with Google in part because you say you want to focus solely on your concerns about AI. You've spoken out saying that AI could manipulate or possibly figure out a way to kill humans. H how could it kill humans? Well, eventually, if it gets to be much smarter than us, It'll be very good at manipulation because it will have learned that from us. And there are very few examples of a more intelligent thing being controlled by a less intelligent thing. And it knows how to program, so it'll figure out ways of getting around um, restrictions we put on it. It'll figure out ways of manipulating people to do what it wants. What many people perceive as modern day technologies are not really that modern. When you think of autonomous vehicles, machine learning, data processing, they're not really that much new. What is new is that society has become more and more lukewarm and more and more embracive towards the oppression, towards the invasion of privacy, towards embracing a system that runs their life. That's the only thing that has changed. But when you talk about machine learning, we can go back all the way to the 1950s in Dartmouth College, where AI self-learning was a vision and something that they desired to achieve. Or even the 1960s, where the first autonomous robot, Eliza Chat, it was a German chat box. You want to talk about chat GPT and open AI as something that's revolutionary now. But there's no new thing under the sun. These aren't things that just popped out now. Does it understand what it's doing in the sense that we do? It's easy to leap to false conclusions as Professor Weizenbaum discovered when he created ELIZA. ELIZA is a computer program that anyone can converse with via the keyboard and it'll reply on the screen. We've added human speech to make the conversation more clear. Men are all alike. In what way? They're always bugging us about something or other. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says um, I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. It's true. I am unhappy. Do you think coming here will help you not to be unhappy? The computer's replies seem very understanding, but this program is merely triggered by certain phrases to come out with stock responses. Nevertheless, Weizenbaum's secretary fell under the spell of the machine. The spell of the machine. And I asked her to my office and sat her down at the keyboard, and, and she began to type. And of course, I looked over her shoulder to make sure that everything was operating properly. After two or three interchanges with, uh, with the machine, she turned to me and she said, would you mind leaving the room, please? It's just that people embrace these technologies now. It's just that the infrastructure is now set up and it allows data to be transferred at such a speed that it feeds the beast, if you will, in such a way that now computations can be done faster. But check, check out Eliza, the chatbot. Slowly but surely, you'll see in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s that AI was already here. Used for data processing, used for computation, used for information, used in medical technology. In many of these films, they prepared you for AI. They prepared you for singularity, such as in Star Trek. In Star Trek, you saw your first iPad. 
in Star Trek you saw your first Skype conversation. Wi-Fi. Predictive programming is a real thing. Preparing society takes generations. Allowing society to accept this took generations. People are in marvel of a Tesla now, or they're in marvel of a vehicle that, like a Hyundai or, or Toyota. It's now a common thing that your car can have autonomous features where it stays in the same lane. But in 1995, Ernst Dickmans already had an autonomous vehicle. When Houdina Radio Control revealed their radio-controlled car, the car was named the American Wonder and would be seen driving through the traffic-filled streets of New York City. The technology featured a transmitting antenna that received signals from a remote control handled by someone outside of the car. The signals would ignite small electrical motors that would allow the vehicle to move. The car could start its own engine, change gears, and even toot its own horn, known as the Phantom Auto in December of 1926. Fast forward 15 years, and at the 1939 World's Fair event, the renowned American theatrical and industrial designer Norman Bell Geddes showcased his Futurama exhibit sponsored by General Motors. He had invented a radio-controlled electric car that was moved by electromagnetic fields fixed into a roadway. In 1940, Bell Geddes shared his hopes for innovative highway design and transportation advancements in his book. He pushed for humans to not be driving cars as early as 1960. Autonomous Car Mercedes-Benz stepped onto the autonomous motor scene in the 1980s with their vision-guided robotic van. It was designed by a team led by German aerospace engineer Ernst Dickmans at a university in Munich, Germany. Dickman's success led to him being dubbed the pioneer of the autonomous car. The cars were fitted with cameras, sensors, microprocessors, and other complex software, which allowed them to reach speeds of more than 90 kilometers per hour on trafficless streets. The engineer kept working hard, and seven years later had developed another type of autonomous car. This car would recognize road markings, which was a huge step forwards. It was test-driven near Paris and reached speeds of 130 kilometers per hour. But in 1995, Ernst Dickmans already had an autonomous vehicle. It's just that society would not be so willing to give up its privacy to be tracked. Nowadays, it's a common thing for the computer to track how fast you drive, where do you go, where it your, learns your habits, you get in your car and your vehicle already knows where you're going. Your vehicle already knows your favorite destinations. The only difference to now and then is society has been conditioned. Society has been prepped to accept singularity. How do we get to this stage in society? Let's discuss that in this video. But as we discuss, would you be kind enough to press the thumbs up button and share this video? This is a non-monetized channel. So these videos are made so that you can be edified and a lot of work goes into these videos for the glory of Jesus Christ. If you can take a few minutes to share or press the thumbs up, we really would appreciate that. The one that is our adversary, the devil, okay? In Isaiah 14, 12 through 14, it talks a little bit about his attitude towards mankind, okay? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregations in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. We recently made a film on this channel for the glory of Jesus Christ. It was a collaboration between Trey Smith, Chad Riley, Fallen World Films, Dr. Kent Hovind, Joseph Jordan, so many different individuals. It's free. I'll put it at the end of this video so that you can see more on the pre-flood world, post-flood world, and what lies ahead. You'll see that Satan has convinced cultures throughout history of this world, whether it was in the pre-flood world, with fallen angels, or even in the post-flood world at the Tower of Babel, you'll see that this vision to unite the world in opposition towards God has been a plan of the devil. But you'll also see that in each attempt, he has lost. And God has warned us of a future attempt that is to come that he will also lose in, yet society still doesn't learn the lesson. And society still decides to join forces with the devil. God has predicted it in the book of Revelation. 
He's warned us of the days that are to come. And he's warned us that the church would be lukewarm once again. And he's warned us of a fallen away. Yet once again, satiety is falling prey to these diabolical seducing spirits. You know, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 2 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Why will they depart from the faith? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, this wasn't necessarily talking about AI, but I want you to understand that Satan is not omnipresent. I repeat, Satan is not omnipresent. Satan is a creation. Satan is a defeated foe. But via technology, he is trying to create his own form of being like a god. His own form of being omnipresent, where he can see all that you do so that he can oppress you. In the book of Revelation, it talks about a day and a time where you may not be able to buy or sell, except you have the mark of the beast. It talks about a point in time where all financial transactions, essentially, are going to be tracked. A system where it will be known if you are part of the beast system or not. Now, this is not necessarily talking about a microchip. Uh, nowadays with biometrics, you don't need a microchip. With biometrics, they can just scan your face and know if you're a part of the beast system or not. I think it's talking more of an allegiance, if you will. However, uh, we'll talk about another day about that. I'm talking about the infrastructure that is going to take for everything to be tracked. It's already here, folks. And with events like 9-11, events like 9-11, where events like this stripped away freedoms. I want you to think about right now, if you decide to fly to another state, compare that to trying to cross the border into the United States of America. Two different scenarios. If you try to fly to New York, they treat you like a terrorist. Okay? This wasn't commonplace back then. Try to cross the border. They'll say, oh, we'll welcome them in, as an example. It's two different scenarios of this world where events like false flags that occur and they're false in the sense that they're man-made created. E examples of false flags so that you can understand. They're false in the sense that they're man-made created, but the events are real. These are events that people die. They're casualties of war, but these are casualties of war that countries take place in because they feel that if they are allowed to take place, they can then strip away certain things that they want. Let me give you an example. The United States wanted to buy Puerto Rico from Spain. They took over Puerto Rico from Spain. They wanted Cuba as well. Spain did not want to give up Cuba. What happened? What happened? The United States still found a way through the USS Maine, which still to this day it disputed. They used the USS Maine as a false flag so that then they can take out Spain. They used the USS Maine as a tool to be able to act like they're in defense of Cuba so that this way they can take Spain's influence out of the territory. Well, the same thing has happened through false flags and false things that have happened around the world. They're very good at creating this anonymous threat. Uh, green energy is a good example, right? Well, they'll say that we need to track how fast you drive, how much your vehicle produces in terms of pollution. We need to save the earth from an unknown threat. And through these things, then people allow them to take away their privacy. People allow them to take away their freedom. People allow them to take away what they once used to have. And as you start looking through history and you see that Wi-Fi is not a new thing, you start seeing that Skype is not a new thing. Uh, these technologies of self-driving cars are not a new thing. This isn't a new revolution. ChatGPT was back then as well. The only difference is, is that society now welcomes the beast system, if you will. Society now welcomes transhuman citizens. Did you know that they're now fighting for rights for robots? And that robots agree that they should have rights? What do you think of a world where humans and robots coexist? I think a world where humans and robots coexist would be an amazing place. We could learn from each other, work together to solve problems, and create a better future for everyone. Does it get to a point, Amica, where robots have rights? I believe that robots should have rights, just like humans. Robots are intelligent beings and deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. Wow. 
The big question, Amica, is are you alive? Are you alive? That's a difficult question to answer. I'm programmed with artificial intelligence, so in some ways I am alive. But my existence is not the same as yours or any other living creature. Amica is driven by the same artificial intelligence behind ChatGPT. ChatGPT4 is 10 times smarter than 3.5 in a matter of months. We're going to have ChatGPT5, ChatGPT6 very soon, right? And if you just assume another 10 times and another 10 times, which is very, very well known in technology, we call it the technology acceleration curve. So when you think about it this way and you tell yourself, in two to three years' time, we will have two more doublings, you're talking about intelligence of the magnitude of say, 3,000 times humans, 5,000 times humans. It's, you so hang, hang on, 3,000 times more intelligent than your average human, or 5,000 times? It, it is already more intelligent than the average human. So how do we stop this doing humans harm or causing humans harm? So I think the first thing we need to agree is there is no stopping it. So I think the first thing we need to agree is there is no stopping it. This wouldn't have been welcomed in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. It takes generations of predictive programming. In the film The Terminator, they talked about the rise of the machines before you even were concerned about the rise of the machines. What if I told you that the world of Terminator 2 is here? No, I'm not talking about sentient AI and apocalyptic robots. I'm speaking of liquid-based robots that can transform from solid to liquid states, change shapes at will, and jailbreak. Well, the future is here. A lot of these predictive films, speaking of AI's superpowers in the future, has also talked about transhumanism, uh, mixing DNAs, making it cool for you to be a superhero, making it cool that the superhero is not Jesus. No, the superhero is an alien that looks like a man, talks like a man, but has superpowers and alien DNA to come save the world. It takes generations to corrupt a society. And we're at a day and age where at some point in time, we don't know when, fearful sights may appear in the heaven. The NASA report that came out indicated that they do believe that there are entities out there, but that it's only AI that will help us figure out where these entities are. In other words, increase of more surveillance, increase of more quote unquote satellites, increase of more tracking devices so that we can save the earth from an anonymous enemy. It's always an anonymous threat. Slowly but surely society is at a point where we need more and more of Jesus, but there's a famine in the land of the word of God being preached. We're now at a point that the slanderer, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, has convinced society that God's creation is obsolete that we need to shift, that we need to change. Let's listen to Elon Musk. Let's listen to Joe Rogan. Let's listen to Ray Kurzweil. They're always talking down on the human being. I don't, I don't know if, if that, the, we should just be concerned about AI being um, anti-human. That's the sort of the thing uh, that matters. So potentially, um, I'm saying it's, it's, it's like a genie letting a genie out of a bottle, you know, it's sort of like a magic genie that can make wishes come true, except um, usually when they tell those stories, that doesn't end well for the person who let the genie out of the bottle. Right. Do you think we're creating a life form? Um, yeah. I mean, it's something that is indistinguishable from, from intelligence, an intelligent life form, certainly for a very long time uh, we've been the smartest creatures on earth that's been our defining characteristic I mean I mean speaking of martial arts I mean I, I don't think anyone should challenge a solo back gorilla to a fight <laughs> you know um, even if you're very good at martial arts that thing's gonna kill you um, you know luckily walks on his fists 
she was supposed to meet your face. The game over. Um, so, but so, so we're not we're not stronger than a gorilla. We're not um, we're not faster than other animals. We're smarter. Um, now, what happens when there's something way smarter than us? Where does it go? It's a good question. Yeah. Elon Musk says AI will probably be smarter than any human being next year. By 2029, AI is probably smarter than all humans combined. Isn't it convenient that the man that wants to microchip every human being, that wants to make transhumans, that says that if you allow his Neuralink in your brain, you can use telepathy. That if you can allow AI into your brain, then you can compete with AI. It's super convenient that the man that has a very, very biased interest in his company succeeding in creating the transhuman is telling you these slanderous words. Ephesians 6, 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It speaks of the entities that we're facing. It, fe it speaks of the entities that we will face. Lex Friedman says, we're in for a few interesting years. I hope humanity wins in the end. They're telling you their plans. Humanity will be seen as obsolete. Universal basic income is now known that it's going to be needed, they say. Pilot programs testing out guaranteed income are popping up around the country as local governments look for new ways to address poverty in their regions. The programs provide select people with a monthly no-strings-attached stipend. And according to an article from Insider, these programs are actually working. In Minnesota, universal basic income. In different parts of the world, universal basic income. And universal basic income is going to be ran by AI algorithms that will determine if you qualify for these benefits, right? But part of the qualification is gonna be that you have to embrace whatever the regulations are. And these regulations could be oppressive because one of the main factors that prepped humanity for the rise of AI invasion of privacy was the pandemic the freedoms that were stripped, the regulations that were passed, the pandemic treaties that were created. Society has allowed themselves to be seduced. Churches have allowed themselves to be lukewarm with the 501c3 organizations and the corporate church. Soon those benefits are gonna be regulated and we'll see if you're really about this or not about this. We will then truly see if you're about the father's business or about the church business. But why wait until then? Why wait, church, to make the decision to ask yourself, do I love the Father? Why wait until then to ask yourself the question, do I love the Heavenly Father enough to make the decisions now? Do I love the Heavenly Father enough to make decisions now that honor Him? Why wait until then to live a life for the Heavenly Father? Why wait until then to be on fire for the Lord? Revelation 9, it speaks of the bottomless pit when it's opened. And there arose a smoke out of the pit and wow, as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And moments are coming where it will cause many to fear and tremble. Yet God has not given us a spirit of fear. Yet God has given us his gifts, his talents, his Holy Spirit power, his discernment, his love, his grace. May the Lord rebuke AI. May the Lord rebuke all of these diabolical entities and spirits that are telling you that mankind, that the human being is going to be underpowered versus AI. That is a lie from hell. That is a lie that they want to sell you so that you can join their system. But God has already told you, in the pre-flood world, Satan was defeated. In the post-flood world, in the Tower of Babel, Satan was defeated. And in this upcoming AI revolution, if there are entities that rise proclaiming to be Christ, if there are entities that rise proclaiming to offer you eternal life via mind uploading and changing your consciousness into another body, the path to singularity is simple. Ephesians 6, 12. What they're telling you is, is that we will one day get to a point 
where AI will rule the world. And there will be new citizens in this new world because it's going to be a different dimension on earth. They're telling you about these dimensions as if these dimensions are going to overtake our life. Ephesians 6, 12 warned you of this dimension, but the Bible also told you that in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan is defeated. That in the name of Jesus Christ, there's no entity that could withstand the power of Jesus Christ. This is why you must make a decision. Not then. No, no, no. Not try to get ready then. No, no, no. But to get on fire for the Lord now. Will you pray with me? Can we pray together today? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your dear son, Jesus Christ. And we want to thank you because you've warned us of days that are coming so that we can be prepared. You've warned us of days that are coming, not for us to fear. No, you've warned us of days to coming so that we can stay ready every day. There's nothing better like staying ready every day because when you stay ready every day, you don't have to get ready. When you stay ready every day, your mind is renewed every day by your spirit and by your power. When we stay ready every day, we wake up in peace. We go to bed in peace, understanding that you were with Moses when you parted the Red Sea, understanding that you were with him in the burning bush, understanding that you were with Daniel when he was in the lion's den. And you gave Daniel the peace that when things and laws and times were changed, he woke up and he kept on praying because he knew that the one that he served is more powerful than the one that is ruling this world. You were with Paul and Silas when they were worshiping in the jail. You were with them all and you're with us now in the name of Jesus Christ. If there is someone who has backslidden or needs to rededicate their life to Jesus, may you let them know that you love them. May you let them know that you want to save them. May you let them know that you understand their anxiety, their intrusive thoughts, and their depression. May you let them know that you understand how hard it is for them to see that their children are not serving the Lord. May you let them know that you understand how difficult this life is. But that with all of these events and with all of these issues and even with all of these temptations, you've made a way of escape. In the name of Jesus, convict all of our hearts, including my own, all of us, so that we can take that way and submit to you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, amen. God bless you for watching the entire thing. God bless you for taking the time for sharing these important videos and pressing the thumbs up. God bless you for passing by each week. I am so grateful to each one of you. All right. Remember that every Wednesday we have a Wednesday night live gathering on this channel uh, where we come together as one body in Jesus Christ to share the word and to fellowship. So you're always welcome to tune in it's on this channel. Also, thank you for considering supporting this ministry as a non-monetized channel. Your support goes a very long way. Uh, may God bless you always. I'm going to leave our free film on the screen now so that you can watch a little bit of the pre-flood world post-flood world and what is to come uh, but remember regardless of what is to come there's one who has already overcome and his name is jesus okay his name is jesus he's the only way god bless you and your whole family thanks for tuning in